I just want to talk really quickly about the power of statically linking in the modern era. So if I'm going to tell a little story. So once upon a time, I worked for a company that had, I think it was Rational, was, was the company that we, it was, I didn't work directly for Rational, I worked for IBM. And I had a coworker who used to maintain uh, a compilation lab. And this has a point of promise. And you'll say, well, what's a compilation lab? In 2024, the concept of a compilation lab is like, people are like, why would you ever do that, right? Back then, in order to get a binary that would run on a specific machine, you had to have one of those machines. You could not compile unless you had one of those machines. And so we maintained, at, I, we didn't, I mean, it was mostly him, but they maintained, whatever, a very complicated compilation lab that took up physical real estate space Cost money, had to have network connections. Sometimes you couldn't even network the things because I remember Rational had to have a build for SCO. I know nobody knows what SCO is. SCO, it's one of the original, they're the ones who had the original Linux. Um, before they collapsed, they had the original Linux uh, patents and they were out suing everybody. Um, but yeah, so you had, to, in, order, in order to release a product for a target OS, a, a, a compile a, a piece of software, you had to have the hardware physically in your compilation lab. So that meant that people that made software, they had to maintain these extremely complicated labs. And it, they, there was no such thing as a VM, yeah. They didn't have VMs back then, they just had hardware. So you had these horribly complex labs, and... Uh, I mean, even if VM does not work, right? You cannot compile C code for a Mac in a VM. No, it doesn't work. You can't do it. So, I mean, you're probably some ways you could trick it, but you would, it would still, even today, you know, VMs don't cover all the bases. But what does cover the base, and this is where I was getting to the point, what does cover the base is all of these modern, as of 2013, I would say, 2010, 2013, is when it came really mainstream, LLVM, low-level volume uh, virtual machine, right? And all of the things like it, maybe that's what you meant by VM, by the way. I don't know if you meant low-level virtual uh, or if you meant the, the higher level kind of thing. Anyway, so this is, this is a significant thing. This is a really significant thing. So that entire compilation lab just evaporated. There was no need to do it because in any modern language, any modern compiled language, actually all languages are compiled, but strictly speaking, one where the bar, the artifact can run directly, right? You end up with an elf binary in Linux, for example. Um, that is a big deal. I mean, it's a really, really big deal. I remember the first time, um, because even, even when I was, um, you know, back in the day when we were doing distributed enterprise uh, auditing and things like that, and I wrote some of the best code I've ever written, it was in Perl, Indigo Perl, um, Active State Perl, and it would um, compile the Perl, it would bundle up the inter. It doesn't really compile. It would bundle up the interpreter and it would bundle up all its dependencies and put it all in there. And then it would, when you ran it, it would undo all of that stuff and send it to interpreter. It was a complete hack. Um, and so, in, in you know, in the modern era, you now can compile statically compile. But the really amazing thing is, I can compile an EXE for Windows on my Mac or on my Linux machine that won't even run on the system it was compiled on. And the way that that is done is through static linking. In the old days, we did not do static linking. Static linking means that um, when you write code, the assembler you know, figures everything out. I'm going to ruin this. Um, but the assembler figures out all the binary bits of code that you need and assembles, you know, the, or the linker actually links those all together so you get this binary that... That is that is actually a bunch of little you know machine code that gets compiled gets, gets compiled together gets put together into this you know this binary blob that then you know that has a stack and heap and all that stuff and then that thing gets sent to as far as I know um, you know can be sent straight to the uh, to the processor without having an interpreter right because the, an interpreter is compiled in the case of Python or Perl or whatever that's the thing that actually goes into memory and runs um, so in Go you can do it but in the old days, one of the reasons we had to have these static weird labs, I mean these weird compilation labs, was because things were dynamically linked because you would never make a big, big binary that had all of these redundant copies in it, right? So it was this, you know, permission to put everything into these massive binaries. By, by, by 1980s, 1990s standards, the binaries that Go makes, even the stripped down ones, including the ones that Rust makes, are relatively big. 
Because why? Because all those libraries that you got, you should see some of those, the small ones. You should go look, look at LS, for example, and some of the other binaries that actually use dynamically linked libraries. That's where DLL comes from or in the Windows world, right? So the idea of that is, is that you, you would compile, you know, all of the, the functions and stuff like that into their own binaries. And then those things would be, um, they would either be combined together in a statically linked thing so they were all traveling with it. Um, but in the early days, that was considered extremely wasteful. So what do they do? They would send, you know, the, the main one and then it would run on the computer and the, the operating system would say, oh, you want to use this thing? I got one right here. And that's where, you know, varlib comes from right? Um, user lib, var lib, a lot of the stuff in lib, those are all dot a, you know, dot so dot dll. Those are all the reusable bits of binary. So, so when you're, you're, you know, you're a super tiny distributed binary, it would run, but it, it was, it would, it would, it would only run on the system if it had the right library, right? And if it didn't have the right library, it would crash in spectacular ways, <laughs> And so Pike and the gang and everybody, for Go, for example, you know, finally somebody said, look, this is madness, um, not having the right libraries on a system so that in our program, and people, it was also extremely insecure. To date, it is still very insecure. In fact, some of the best hacks of, in history have been tricking uh, the, the linker, or not the linker, but, you know, the thing that says, hey, you need to go call out to this library over here and call its function. And so basically like in a go like in a Unix path, you know, you put something in the path ahead of time and it takes it takes precedent over the other thing. That kind of attack, the link lo linker loader, thank you. But that that particular attack, um, you know, by putting something else that's going to resolve ahead of the other thing, that's that attack is still very common in dynamically linked um, you know, applications. And people are still doing that even with static linking on occasion. But so, so static linking, being able to put everything that a program needs into the program itself and have it, even though it's fatter, and then having it ship around all by itself uh, makes a bunch of miracles possible. One of them is much harder to hack. But the second one is I can make a thing that'll run on a Mac that won't run on the computer it was compiled on, whether it's Windows or anything else. So that's, that's an explanation of why... All of these languages are used and why they're so popular and why we're moving away from interpreter languages as well as completely away from applications that use uh, the dynamically linked libraries that are available on the system. In fact, I don't know very of very many that do other than operating systems. I think most main mainstream new applications, middleware, um, you know, and, and containers have completely, you know, changed the whole deal as well. Um, because I mean, you could put all the dynamic libraries in the container and then make sure that it's, you know, the program is there as well. And it's the only thing using it. So containers have helped uh, as well. But I, in general, if you're writing software in 2024, you are not dynamically linking unless, unless you have some sort of legacy dependency, such as every, every single operating system on the planet. So hopefully that'll give you a sense of it. Um, some overview of it. I'm going to go ahead and upload that now. Bye.